خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولا علكم تشكرون وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الدع إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون صدق الله العظيم Our next speaker is Mr. Ahsan Al-Haq who will be speaking to us about Nabik's Center for Humanity program. Mr. Ahsan Al-Haq is an industrial engineer currently working as a management consultant in Houston, Texas. He is adjunct faculty and management trainer at the University of Houston. He was an employee of GE, Honeywell, and Compaq. Mr. Hawk is a Nubik Life member since 2013 and has coordinated Nubik's 2007 and 2013 annual conventions in Houston, Texas. He also organized Nubik's strategic planning meeting in 2007 and is currently serving as outreach coordinator and was Sunday Islamic school principal of Masjid al-Salam part of Islam society of Greater Houston. Please welcome Mr. Asim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. As-salatu as-salamu ala ashraf ala ala anbiya ala mursaleen. Sayyidana Muhammad ala ala sahabi ba'd ma'een. First, I thank to our creator and sustainer and the organizer of the event that you all for giving me the opportunity to inform about a highly beneficial humanitarian project in Bangladesh where all of us can inshallah support the project. I'm going to talk about the uh, NABIC project called NABIC Center for Humanity for Underprivileged Community, Community in Slam and Remote Area in Bangladesh. It is a project designed to provide a multitude of services under one roof in a very cost-efficient way to improve the physical and mental and financial and social health of a marginalized community in holistic manner. The approximately cost for the project for, for a two-day per week free general medical clinic providing service to about 50 to 75 patients each day is $24,000 per year funded by tax-deductible Zaka and Sadaka. Once a month, OBG, OBGYN service for women's period, uh, periodic eye camp, other specialized services will be provided. Also, uh, provide educational and vocational, vocational training programs such as tailoring, cell phone repair, driving, basic nursing skill, and other skills, which can be added gradually at the center. Alhamdulillah, Nabik, a charity in USA, and its NGO, affiliate NGO partner, DBC, Do Better for Children in Dhaka, is currently managing 10 such centers in Bangladesh with another three in the pipeline, inshallah. Six of these centers are family funded in Narshandi, Dhaka, Tangail, Ramanbaria, Nuakali, and Silat. Four of these, uh, four, four of these are clinics like Dhaka and in Silat are rest in remote area in Bangladesh. Two of these clinic in Dhaka slum area funded by 1972 batch government laboratory alumni and one clinic Dhaka slum area funded by Dhaka medical college 22 second batch, 32 sorry, 32 second batch. Average is centered, we provide healthcare service over 100 patients per week. Inshallah, this year, our plan to provide healthcare 
services over 50,000 patients. One sun, watch such center is mobile in boat serving Lebanon Island in Gabura in Sund Sundarban area. All these uh, clinics are funded by family and friends. I remind myself and uh, then other what Allah SWT said in Ayah 6 of Surah Fussilat as of those who believe and do good deeds they shall have a never ending reward. His Prophet Muhammad, Muhammad SAW said give charity without delay for it stand in way of calamity. I appeal to you not to miss this opportunity offered by Nabik who, who, who Dabi can start the project in a turnkey approach without charging any overhead. Please start a project like this, this for, the for, for the benefit of your loved ones, parents, children, in-laws, and actively, actively support the charity project of Nabi called Nabi Center for Humanity. For more information about this project, please visit Nabi website Please donate generously, use zaka or sadaka to help the underprivileged community in Bangladesh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcoming, accept our effort, guide us and bless us and our families. Subhanaka Allahumma bihamdik, ashadu la ilaha anta astagufu la tubu ilaiki. Jajakullah khairan, assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. My siblings and I wanted to start a Sadaqah Zaya to help our roots in honor of our parents who did so much for us and left some inheritances. In December 2020, our family started this NCH in Silet to serve several nearby slums. In addition to taking care of healthcare and other needs for the disadvantaged people, this project has connected our family living in faraway places like Malaysia, Canada, and Bangladesh. It has provided a platform to give back to our country. It is our hope that other families will work together to leave legacies of perpetual charities like our Mohiddin Noor Healthcare and Training Center to which future generations can easily connect and contribute. Many thanks to Nabik. DBC, my husband, my brother, and other family members for helping our dream come true. Jazakallah khair. Zane, e jaga amra oshudori nei shaptai dudi nashi, oshudori nei doctor o valo, amra boish ko manush amagoro dekha shina kore. Assalamu alaikum. I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and then Nabik for the opportunity to share my thoughts about this unique project of Nabik. The first one was started in a village in Brahmanbaria in 2000 by the Idris Chairman family to take care of the health care and other socio-economic needs of inhabitants of their ancestral home in a holistic manner. After years of efforts, we came up with a turnkey project with very low overhead offering a multitude of services under one roof with robust benchmarking and data collection system in place for expansion and improvement. When Nabik took charge in 2017 and started helping its patrons to establish similar projects, little did we realize that by the grace of our creator, this humble effort will become a prototype for about a dozen such centers in different areas of Bangladesh now, where families, friends, and alumni join hands to give back to their roots. I strongly feel that we need to consider starting at least one such project to benefit our parents, loved ones, 
show gratitude to our Lord and help Bangladeshis with funds and expertise. Although our aim is to make each project self-sufficient, we need $100,000 this year to help these centers attain their full potentials. May our Lord accept our efforts, guide and reward us. Jazakallah khairan. Next, I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker, Imam Khalid Latif. Imam Khalid Latif is Executive Director and Chaplain for Islamic Center at New York University, where he was appointed as the first Muslim chaplain back in 2005. Similarly, Imam Latif was appointed the first Muslim chaplain at Princeton University in New Jersey in 2006, and ultimately became a permanent figure at NYU in 2007, when the role was institutionalized. Imam Latif's influence in the New York area is well recognized, such that in 2007 he was nominated by Mayor Michael Bloomberg to become the youngest chaplain in the history of the New York Police Department. Imam Latif is highly sought after uh, due to his unique blend of motivational speaking, leadership insights, and spiritual developments. He has been invited to speak at many universities, media outlets, as well as the U.S. State Department. As such, we're honored to have him here with us this evening at Nabik's Ramadan event. Imam Khalid Latif, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank him, we praise him, we glorify him. We teach him to send his choices salutations upon his most beloved sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and upon all those who choose to tread in his path until the last day. Alhamdulillah, we are just moments away from the blessed month of Ramadan. May Allah make us from amongst those who reach it and benefit from all of its barakah. And as we get ready for it, our readiness and preparation in these last hours should not be something that is just logistical or physical, but a preparation that is inclusive of everything that makes you and I who we are, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically, in every sense of the word. And within the frame of that preparation, to start to think as we ready ourselves for what is coming in 30 days and 30 nights of moments that we don't want to leave anything behind, that we take advantage of every second, of every minute, of every hour that's given to us with a deep reflection and contemplation that allows for us to conceptualize now what it is that a successful Ramadan would mean to each of us. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says to us that when this month of Ramadan comes, Futihat Abwaab Al-Jannah, that the gates of Jannah, they're open. Wahulikat Abwaab Al-Nar, and the gates of Jahannam, they're closed. Wasufidat Al-Shayateen, and the Shayateen, they are chained, they are locked up. And that means that what is unchained is just me myself in my entirety. It is me with my jasad, my physical being. It is me with my nafs, my ego, my lower self. It is me with my spiritual heart, my qalb. It is me with my aqal, my intellect. It is me with my irada, my sheer will and determination. And it is me with that part of me that makes me distinct from everything in creation the ruh, the soul that Allah had given to me and to every child of Adam. I want you to think for yourself right now, what does success look like for you in terms of Ramadan? And to answer the question, that if you were to take out a notebook and write at the top of it, what does success in Ramadan mean to me? What would you answer it for yourself? Or another question that you can have that is on the day of Eid al-Fitr, the first of Shawwal, a holiday at the end of Ramadan. May Allah make us from amongst those who reach it and celebrate it with every way possible that we can that is pleasing to Him. The reflective question can be from this moment, weeks away from that day of Eid, what is it that I'm going to be celebrating? on that day of Eid al-Fitr? What is it that I'm going to be celebrating in terms of my accomplishments, my achievements, the things that I have done well? That the day that I serve on that day of Eid, 
the person that I am, what will they be looking back on, on the weeks prior to it, in terms of things that I know inwardly and outwardly I would have gotten completed and accomplished. And that's for you and I to start to reflect on in this moment, because it's a celebration of something, not in a vacuum, but fundamentally what it is is a celebration of our ability to recognize that we have the capacity to say no to things that in the rest of the year, we might not realize that capacity. That it is not the nafs that's in control, but is I that am in control. It is not any part of my emotions or any of my feelings that are still a part of me, but not who it is that I'm equated to in full. And I will celebrate on that day of Eid al-Fitr because I know that I have done what it is that I could to take advantage of every moment in this coming month of Ramadan. A hadith that I would share with you that can help to be a frame for success as a starting point. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is with his companions and he says, who will take something from me? That if you were to act upon it, you would have benefit in this world and in the next. And Abu Huraira radiallahu an, he says that give it to me, Ya Rasulullah. And in the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives him five advices, five counsels that can inshallah ta'ala be a good framing for Ramadan for us. The first advice he gives to Abu Huraira radiallahu an is ittaq al-maharim takuna abad al-nas that refrain from that which is haram, you will be the most virtuous of people. And it's an interesting frame to understand because quite often when we think about goodness, we think about what we do. That mashallah, look at how much Quran that person reads. That mashallah, look at how much they are praying. But here the Prophet is saying that your goodness is also attached to what it is that you keep yourself from doing. And you deepen in your understanding of what the haram is. That the consumption of pork, the committing of zina, the drinking of alcohol, these things are haram. May Allah protect us from them. But so too, gossiping is haram, backbiting is haram, lying is haram, cheating is haram, abuse is haram, oppression is haram, domestic violence is haram, racism is haram. And so you want to make a firm commitment to understand that all of us have areas to improve upon and to understand that the engagement of the haram impacts back the heart. The act of fasting is meant to soften the heart because Ramadan has never been about empty stomachs, but it's been about full hearts. And so as a first frame of preparation, make a commitment to say that I will stay away from the haram. And I will acknowledge that I have the capacity to make mistakes so that I embrace myself to stand back up after I have fallen and just move forward as best as I can. The second advice that he gives to Abu Huraira radiallahu an, he says, that be content with what you have been given. You will be the richest, the most satisfied of people. And this is fundamentally what Ramadan is about for us, to understand that the consumer driven society in which we are in that teaches us to feed the physical and feed the physical and feed the physical is not what it is that we want in terms of our overall nourishment. But we can find now deeper contentment by understanding that we have so much and not to pursue the world in terms of what is not there, but to reflect deeply on what is actually there. So spend some time in your month of Ramadan to see what it is that you actually have and to take account for it in a sense of gratitude and appreciation so that with deliberate attempts of rendering inward balance, you can find contentment. In another hadith, the Prophet says, that true richness is not having an abundance of things of the earth, but true richness is having the richness of your soul. The third advice he gives is that love for the people what you love for yourself. You will be a Muslim. And this is coupled with another advice that he gives, that give your neighbor their right, you will be a believer. And that is the third advice, love for people what you love for yourself is the fourth. Excuse me for that. 
give your neighbor ihsan. Ihsan in our tradition is defined as that you worship God as if you can see him. For you understand, although you cannot see him, that he can see you. That you live with a sense of energy and empowerment, a strength that the eyes that watch you are also from the one who watches over you. And you never find yourself in a place where Allah would not want you to be found, nor are you absent from a place that Allah would want to see you be present. And you give everything its right. And this is where you can support some of the good work that Nabik does to assist with the orphans and those who are destitute in need, to understand that your neighbor and the rights that they have over you are not just the person who lives next door to you, but in our tradition, 40 houses to your left, 40 houses to your right, 40 in front of you, 40 behind you. But you start to give beauty, give goodness, give real ihsan to the people around you, the communities around you, those who are in your immediate proximity, and those who are waiting to benefit from the blessing that is uniquely you. And you live your life in a way that says that the eyes of the divine are upon me. And it couples itself with this fourth advice that you love for people what you love for yourself, you will be a Muslim. In the two advices, the prophet is giving a categorical distinction between what is to be a person of faith, Iman, and a person of Islam. And so you love for people what you love for yourself, by giving to people what it is that you love for yourself. You love the security you have for yourself, then in the month of Ramadan, make sure you're giving real security. You love having the company of people, then in Ramadan, make sure you're checking on people who are alone. There is no shortage of good deeds that we can do in the midst of this pandemic as people are still struggling throughout the world with little or no food, no shelter, nothing to really have. And at a time that people have very little, give of what it is that you've been blessed with to help them get through it. And then the fifth advice the Prophet gives, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَلَا تُكَثِّرَ الدَّهَكْ فَإِنَّ كَثْرَةَ الدَّهَكِ تُمِيتُ قَلْبِ They do not laugh in excess, because indeed an excess of laughter, it weakens the heart. And that doesn't mean that we should be somber, angry-looking people. Because our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he laughed with his companions. He played games with his wife. He spent time with young children and let them know that he cared for them and expanded mercy to them. That we have such vivid descriptions of our Prophet's smile within our tradition. May Allah make us from amongst those who are blessed to be with him in the world beyond this one. The hadith is not justifying being angry, but it's saying that do not make it something that is in excess that you do in terms of your laughter. There are certain moments that seriousness is the basis of it. In this month of Ramadan, you want to be able to raise your hands to the skies and let the tears fall from your eyes. For your own self, for those who are special to you in your heart, and for the world's forgotten. You allow for it to be a means of growth, a means of increase. But these five advices can be a framing point. Refrain from the haram, you will be the most virtuous of people. Be content with what you have been given. You will be the richest of people. Give your neighbor their rights. You will be a believer. Love for the people what you love for yourself. You will be a Muslim. And do not laugh in excess, because indeed in excess of laughter, it weakens the heart. May Allah bless you and your loved ones immensely. May he increase our sisters and brothers at Nabik and make them a continued source of strength and benefit for his creation. May he make us the best of their supporters and help them in the good work that they're doing, both now and throughout the coming month of Ramadan, to assist people in need. May he guide and bless us all. Wallahu ta'ala alim wa billahi tawfiq. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Our next speaker is also well known in Nabik circles, Dr. Muhammad Atal Karim was Provost and Executive Vice Chancellor for Academic and Student Affairs and Chief Operating Officer of the University of Massachusetts at Dartmouth. He is an elected fellow of the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, the Optical Society of America, the Society of Photo Inf Instrumentation Engineers, the Institute of Physics, and the Bangladeshi Academy of Sciences. Dr. Karim has authored and edited some 19 text and reference books and over 365 research papers as he mentored over 55 graduate-level students. 
Dr. Karim has received his BS Honors degree in Physics from the University of Taka and degrees in Electrical Engineering from the University of Alabama. Please welcome another one of Nabik's well-wishers and leaders, Dr. Muhammad Atal Karim. Assalamu alaikum. This is Muhammad Karim. I am speaking to you all from Massachusetts. I am uh, going to talk to you about the topic, why support Nabik? When we assemble amongst Bangladeshis in particular, we always begin with gross domestic product on a very macro scale, which tells every year for last 15, 20 years, our gross domestic product has been going up. And within the last few years, the percentage rate is actually exceeding many of the developing countries. So the conclusion oftentimes could be mistakenly, well, Bangladesh and its people needs no help. Today, I'm going to talk to you and tell this is a false notion. And this is why, that most of this gross domestic product is a result of ready-made garment industry. That amounts to 84% of the total export of the country. However, COVID-19 just hit. What did it do to this industry alone, which is the largest industry of close to $37 billion? Well, COVID-19 is going to cause a $10 billion hit in ready-made garment, RNG. That's a little bit more than 25% less income for that sector of the economy. The second impact is going to be of the many, and I'm listing here, is the foreign currency. It's going to have a $14 billion hit. And this is the money that we these are thousands and hundreds of thousands of people who work overseas, work hard, get money, and then they send back home. A large number of people have been laid off, some put on flight, going back home. And this is going to cause a $14 billion decline in the country's economy this year. What does that mean? To understand that, we should look at the context of our national budget. This year, if there is no COVID, without that, the expenditure on education was going to be about 2%. In health, about 2.4%. In the social protection sector, is about 2.6%. That's without COVID-19, except this year is just going to get worse. Whatever little money is, comes and gets distributed, especially if it's going to the government. And if I begin with Prokolpo, I can assure you, a large percentage will go to the government first. Then to every minister, every half minister, quarter minister, this monthly and that monthly, then the chairman, the commissioner, and finally, whatever pesky little money is left is, will be left up for the common people. One way to look at, instead of looking at gross domestic product, I encourage you to look at Gini index, because what it does, it demystifies GDP by telling what is the gap between the extreme rich and extreme poor? When that number begins to exceed 0.5, it means the country that we are talking of is in the worst possible situation, about to wobble up. Gini index for the United States happens to be 4.34. We were at about that in 1996. So the gap we had between the rich and the poor in 1996 was like United States. Now, by 2020, it has exceeded 0.5, which means there is huge amount of large number of poor 
and feel very filthy rich on the top. This morning and this weekend, I had spent my time on a large conference in Bangladesh, attended to by a lot of people. And we talked about that there are 102 million people have connected to internet. That's 62%. And we stop right there. What we don't want to acknowledge that 5% of this 62% is actually connected with people who have fixed broadband subscription. And the remaining 57% have the mobile broadband subscription. So imagine this, all the help that we try to get out of fixed broadband in most of the world is not available by their, by the majority of people. Another way to look at how Bangladesh is doing, despite all this rosy claim of the government, out of 176 countries, every year, our rank amongst the 176 countries is actually going down. It was 132nd in the year 2002. 15 years later, we are 147 onwards. And that number, is actually behind numbers for India, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bhutan even, which tells me despite all these rosy claim of digital advisor and that advisor, whatever it is, we are actually going behind. So what does it mean? It means majority people, despite the claim, did not order food online, didn't have pizza delivered at their homes, didn't get telemedicine, didn't see an Amazon truck at their door. Actually, majority had no jobs. Majority are without any cash. So today, if you are in Bangladesh, almost in any cities and towns, you will see hundreds and thousands of people sitting. If they care to, they will have six feet in between them. But what is important to understand, the people are waiting for food. This is a story everywhere in the country. Nabik's footprints, as you must have understood, is in the emergency areas, such as for Rohingya, for water and environment through our partner called Broti, in healthcare through Mustafi's Eye Center, Kormir Heart Hospital and others, poverty elevations, in the area of science and technology, in the area of ethics education, which is important because lack of ethics is one of the reasons why a great majority of the resources that our people should have gotten, they don't get that. This is just a picture of a floating boat hospital that our partner Broti brings up in the village area of Gabura in Shatkira district. Poor people will come get the help from the doctors. This picture is of course before COVID-19. Now, despite all the lofty promises, and I heard some of that this weekend during my conference in Bangladesh, you will hear Vision 2030, you will hear Vision 2040, you will hear fourth or fifth industrial revolution. And I'm at a loss because I don't know when was the second or third revolution. What is important to understand, people of Bangladesh desperately need your assistance. Please, please make a difference by contributing to Nabik. Our last speaker and fundraiser for tonight is Dr. Altaf Hussein. Dr. Altaf Hussein serves as the professor and chair of the Community Administration and Policy Practice Concentration in the Howard University School of Social Work in Washington, DC. He holds a doctoral degree from the Howard University School of Social Work he is a double alumnus of Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. He is a former two-term national president of the Muslim Students Association, vice president of the Islamic Society of North America, a current executive committee member of the Muslim Alliance in North America, and a board member of the Peaceful Families Project. Please welcome Dr. Altaf Hussein for tonight's fundraising. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Uh, mashallah, uh, always good to be back with uh, the uh, Nabik and really uh, so excited that we are organizing here before Ramadan begins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gathering all of us today. So we begin, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Wassalatu Wassalam, Ala Rasulullah. 
and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for gathering us just a couple of days before Ramadan begins. You know, I want to thank Nabik for having had the vision for all of these years to really come up with very concrete solutions to many of the challenges facing not only other parts of the world, there are similar challenges, but in particularly in Bangladesh. You heard from, for example, from uh, uh, Dr. Atal Haq, that, uh, uh, you know, if you think about poverty, if you think about the rates of literacy, if you think about access to water, if you think about access to healthcare, if you think about access to education, all of these things in different ways, someone could throw their hands up and say, you know, how much can you expect us to do? What do you want us to do? Well, guess what? What you are expected to do, what I'm expected to do is exactly what the Quran tells us to do and what the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us to do, which is to care for one another. If you happen to be from Bangladesh and you left Bangladesh and you made a, a, a life for yourself in another country, particularly in the United States or in Canada, think about all of the blessings that Allah has bestowed upon you and your family. Think about the fact that there are still millions and millions and millions of people who do not have that opportunity. When you look at education, just education, Nabik has been at the forefront of not only providing education for young girls, but doing so in the most dignified way, doing so in a way that elevates their status and does not oppress them or stigmatize them, rather elevates them in a way that says, you too can go on to become whatever your heart desires. Don't worry about how to pay for the education. Don't worry about how to pay for the uniform. Don't worry about how to pay for the books. Don't worry about how to pay for your meals and your food. Nabik is saying, we in America, the brothers and sisters of Nabik, the members and all of the supporters who have supported it for so many years are saying, we will manage it. Consider healthcare. Sometimes the, the livelihood, the livelihood of the family is dependent on one person, either the, the husband or the wife. Sometimes both of them are working. What if one of them has an issue with cataracts and the vision is impacted? Nabik comes in and has, mashallah, tabarakallah, been able to develop, um, not only build hospitals, but also to be able to say to people who are in America, when you contribute, when you donate money to support Nabik, you are literally transforming the trajectory of that family sitting thousands of miles away back home in Bangladesh with that one operation for the cataract surgery. Imagine giving a person a renewed lease on life because they can now see clearly and they can go and work for themselves. That's one of the things the Prophet peace upon him taught us not to beg. And Nabik's efforts always dignify those who are in need and help them without ever stigmatizing or in any way, you know, making them feel uh, uh, somehow they're belittled through that help. So whether it's the medical care, and you just saw, uh, you know, uh, mashallah, the presentation just now about what's happening with the mobile clinics. You've heard about mobile clinics before, but what about a mobile clinic that's actually on a, on a ship or on a moving vessel on water, if you will. Think about that. How unique is that? It fits the environment that we are supporting. It fits exactly the environment because a lot of the areas in Bangladesh are accessible and more easily accessible. And if there are areas where poverty is high, then maybe the infrastructure is not that great. Maybe the roads are not that great. And so you go by water and you get the healthcare to those in need. Think about the idea of poverty alleviation, all of the efforts to help people not only have the basics. We're talking about Ramadan coming up. In our homes, what are the discussions? Not if we will eat. Most of us are discussing what we will eat, what kinds of fruits we will enjoy at suhoor and at iftar, what kinds of um, uh, uh, you know, meats and fish and, and rice and all of these things that we take for granted. So we don't have a lot of time together today. 
but for the time we do have, it is important that we remind you, please go to the web, go online and use our website, uh, nabic.org forward slash donate. You can also use Zelle and donate directly from your bank account if you use our email address, info, I-N-F-O, at nabic.org. You can text us or call us, and we have people on standby uh, at 901-233-0645. 901-233, thank you so much for sharing that screen, at, and, and, and you can see the different ways to donate. So our job tonight is to focus on Ramadan is to really say to one another, how, what shape am I going to be when I get into Ramadan? And what will I have done as I approach Ramadan in Shabbat? How much will I have prayed more than I did before? How much will I have fasted more than I did before in the voluntary fasts? How much will I have given in Sadaqah than I have done before? Maybe you're saying, you know, I'm holding on to what I want to give because I want to donate in Ramadan. No problem at all. If you come tonight, if you use the phone number that we've shown earlier uh, and text uh, uh, Brother uh, uh, Fazli Ilahi, or you can email at info at nabik.org and say, you know, here's our name and here's how much we want to donate. And you want to let you know that we will donate this, but we're going to make the pledge now and get the blessings of the pledge in Shaban for the intention and get the reward of donating in Ramadan. We're just a couple of days away. However you intend to do it, remember that all of these projects, all of these projects are a part of Nabik's effort to say, we cannot just enjoy life in America without all thing on what we have left behind and who we have left behind. We don't do it out of pity for them. Never give out of pity for the people who are back in Bangladesh. That's not what we're doing. If you think of it, the young, a young girl, and you see you know, on, the, on the screen, the idea of the, the, the this, uh, expansion for the home for girls, not only do they have a safe place to live, but by virtue of that safety and security in terms of their lives, they're also able to focus because their other basic needs have been taken care of. You heard from our vice president, brother, uh, uh, brother Ahsan al Haq, right? Think about what that means. He was talking about some of these programs that we are now saying that sitting here, education, poverty alleviation, healthcare, um, you know, in terms of uh, the, the uh, cataract surgeries that I mentioned, but also in terms of access to water, right? Basic needs that all of them have. So if you donate, $500, for example, if you donate, uh, and I didn't mention this, and, and forgive me for not doing it, but the Rohingya Relief, that education center is a direct uh, you know, result of NABIC efforts here in North America to say, we're not going to let our brothers and sisters who are suffering from the Rohingya population, we're not going to leave them alone. So this education center, for example, has about 750 children being served in five different centers. You and your family, for $2,500, what it cost us is about $2,500 per center per month to, to manage about 150 kids, serving 150 kids. Maybe your family says, you know, we're going to take on the challenge of identifying 12 different family and friends who can each give 2,500. By doing so, you will help Nabik raise the money, 2,500 for January, February, March, for the whole year, and to support the education of these 150 children. So each center is about $2,500 per center per month. Let me uh, see the other projects as well, uh, so that we can inshallah remind our brothers and sisters. I mentioned education for the Rohingya children. Similarly, healthcare for the Rohingya families, right? The entire families, very qualified uh, uh, physicians, nurses, and others, mashallah, are able to provide healthcare but the cost of healthcare is obviously greater because of the supplies and the machinery and all of that. That's at $15,000 a month. If you're thinking about your zakatul mal, maybe you're thinking about how much you've been, you're going to be calculating to, to, to spend on that. 
Well, in Ramadan, you can pay your zakah and get the re extended rewards, extra rewards. But what about making the intention now? What about using the, the, the phone number that I mentioned earlier, 901-233-0645, uh, uh, right? 901-233-0645. How about texting us at that number and just letting us know, you know, I'm going to be giving, here's the amount, and here's the project that I want to give, right? And we're showing you different projects. Why? Because all of this is in the repertoire of what Nabik does. All of this makes up the total uh, programs and activities Nabik you know, is able to provide. And I've been closely working with Nabik for the last several years. And I can tell you the cost ratio, because I teach nonprofit you know, management and, uh, and, and, and talk about this in, you know, in our classes, the cost ratio of how much we spend as Nabik on programs and services and how much is spent on, uh, if you will, uh, uh, administration, the ratio is much more in favor of programs and services. So you can be quite relieved that the money you're donating to Nabik is going mostly to support programs and services. I mentioned uh, you know, water before. We're all going to be thinking about water at iftar time, maybe during the day, right? In this case, for the Rohingya relief, the uh, one tube well that will serve hundreds of people is $2,000 for the deep tube, tube well, $2,000. So maybe you were not thinking about giving, but now you realize that your $2,000 spent from America will be the difference between some of our brothers and sisters in this particular case from the Rohingya population, literally being able to have access to water. Think about that, right? And by the way, Ramadan is coming up, so we should identify at home, you know, a particular drinking container for each family member. If you're still doing plastic bottles, beware of how many plastic bottles are left around the house that are not fully, you know, drunk, right? And so we waste a lot of water, but here we're talking about just $2,000 for the Rohingya uh, fa families for the tube well. Now, I'm talking about the, the 10 centers for uh, what are called the Center for Humanity, right? If you think about it, this mobile, you know, uh, on the water uh, clinic is a phenomenal innovation. It's a, it's a bidah hasana. It's an innovation that's, you know, filled with goodness. Each patient visit is about $4. $4, did you hear what I said? Right? We're not going to be drinking whatever. I don't drink tea or coffee. I know you may enjoy it, right? So if you just think $400 for 100 patients to be visit, to, to have a, a actual doctor's checkup, $400 for 100 patients on this mobile uh, uh, ship clinic. How about if you donate that and say, you know what? I'm not gonna go for just the 400. I'm gonna go inshallah for actually four times five, right? So 400 times five, $2,000. And that way, subhanAllah, for each of your $400, 500 patients will be you know, served from your generosity. The Prophet وسلم, you know, he himself suffered hunger. He himself barely ate. He did not read or write. But, but you know how much encouragement he made for taking care of those who are hungry. He said a believer, he is not a believer who goes to bed with the stomach full, knowing that the neighbor is hungry. He encouraged us to get educated. We're gonna talk about Ramadan. 17th of Ramadan is the day in Medina when they had made the Hijrah, the first Ramadan, when they fasted the actual first Ramadan that was commanded to them. Believe it or not, that was the Battle of Badr, the 17th of Ramadan. And the prisoners of war, because the Muslims were victorious, the prisoners of war were among those who knew how to read and write. And the Prophet ﷺ said, each of you can have your freedom if you help 10 of our you know, uh, Muslims who are, do not know how to read and write, if you help 10 of them to learn to read and write. He emphasized education, emphasized the idea of taking care of hungry, those who are hungry, the miskeen, the orphans. All of this is within your reach. Vocational training, as we talked about earlier, all kinds of ways 
to make people independent. Nabik wants to reduce any you know, potential for begging and allow and increase the, and empower people to be able to care for themselves. $200 to sponsor one person, mashallah, for voc vocational training. And once you teach a person a skill and a trade, they become independent. They go on on their own to do their best to provide for their families. And sitting here in America for $200, we're able to sponsor one person to receive that vocational training. Think the same way as I mentioned about the cataract surgery. Think the same way, because the cataract surgery allows the, the restoration to a great degree of vision for a person who maybe can now provide for their family. In this case, a person who receives vocational training through Nabix program can now go and make products of their own, in this case, through the sewing, uh, using the sewing machine, and maybe sell, sell what they're producing. Maybe take orders for tailoring because of the, the, the trade that they now, uh, the skill that they now know, right? Our goal, our goal is not to worry about how all of these people will be taken care of. Allah will take care of them. Our goal is to say, what can I do? What can my family do? What can my community do to support Nabik in the great work that they're doing, right? So again, it's very straightforward to give. If you're able to give now, fine. You can go to nabik.org forward slash donate. If you want to do it by Zelle, then use our email address, info at nabik.org, and it'll go directly you know, from your account to Nabik. If you want to text or call, as you mentioned earlier, you see on the screen, the phone number, the, the, the blessed phone number is 901-233-0645. We would love you know, for, or to, to receive, inshallah, from you uh, as much support as possible. And this whole idea that we are you know, approaching and so close to approaching Ramadan, we cannot take that for granted. You cannot simply say we're going to get there. You want to keep making dua to, to Allah to help us to reach there. And so say ameen if you're watching and listening, or if you hear this later, Allahumma balighna Ramadan, or Allah help us to witness Ramadan. Uh, you see here the Computer Literacy Center, mashallah, for $3,000 to establish one center. And each center becomes like a sadaqah jariya. Why? Because we don't just establish them and take them down. We establish them, we may operate them, we maintain them, and every batch, every cohort, every cadre of students who comes through that literacy center, every one of them, you have the reward when you help to establish one of these centers. So for $3,000, inshallah, your family could take the benefit, the, uh, the ajr, the reward of being able to support um, uh, one uh, computer literacy center. Brothers and sisters, the opportunities are boundless to make a real impact in the lives of people. Uh, the Center for Ethics Education, you know, broadly speaking, so much is happening around the world. And at the core and the heart of a lot of the head heartache we have is in fact the challenge with ethics. It's a challenge with ethical conduct, ethical behavior, and the ability to discern, right? between what is acceptable behavior, not only within the context of the Quran and the Sunnah, but as broadly you know, a benefit to people as possible, instead of any unethical behavior. For $50,000, you and your family and friends could take on the challenge of develop, helping Nabik to develop the Center for Ethics Education. So what will it be? Which project will you take on? Will you take on the healthcare, the new projects that we have, mashallah? Imagine this, $150,000 to support not one, not two, but three hospitals, three hospitals in Bangladesh for $150,000. Would you want to take tonight the challenge of saying that I and my family and friends will take care of uh, one of these hospitals? will take care of raising the funds to support in just one of these hospitals. Altogether, $150,000, subhanAllah. It's an unimaginable barakah in itself. Why? Because we are in America. And as you know, the currency exchange between dollars to taka is huge. The difference is huge. So it's not just 150. 
it's the barakah of giving the, the, the $10, the $100, the $500, the $1,000, the $2,500, the $5,000, the 10000 whatever dollars we're giving, that Allah will multiply the reward. Then you'll have the tax deduction because Nabik will send you a receipt for your donation so you'll be able to save there. And then on top of that, you also have, you also have the currency exchange. So our dollars are going that much further inside Bangladesh. Brothers and sisters, we uh, wanted to have this um, uh, pre-Ramadan conference, if you will, to really bring attention to the great work that Nabik is doing. You heard earlier um, uh, from our, our um, uh, I actually call him our academic in chief, right? He's the chief academic officer, mashallah, Dr. Uh, uh, Ataul Haq, and also Dr. Hassan al Haq, and, um, uh, and of course, Imam Khalid Latif. All of them came to remind you, and our president of Nabik, all of them came to remind you the same thing, right? What is it that you and I will do to do our share, to carry our share of the burden of supporting these great projects by Nabik? I've mentioned several of them to you, but none of them, none of them would have been a reality unless Nabik had the vision early on to say that we will, in a systematic way, in a very you know, uh, uh, organized way, take on the, the challenge of impacting directly, of you know, producing tangible solutions to the intractable problems of poverty and education and healthcare inside Bangladesh, access to water, as I mentioned earlier, right? So as I start to close, I want to remind you that when you donate to Nabik, you are really saying, not only do you endorse the great work that they're doing, but you want to support and make dua, but also support financially so that every one of these projects, inshallah, can not only come to fruition in the cases of establishing new centers of literacy or uh, the, these uh, uh, digging these tube wells, whatever new things you're doing, may Allah accept it from you. Whatever you're donating to continue our operations, may Allah accept it from you. Whatever, inshallah, intentions you're making before, you know, a, a dua you're making before you donate, may Allah grant you and answer your dua. However you want to do, whether you make the intention now and donate in Ramadan or actually donate now, may Allah accept it from all of you. May Allah replace what you have spent and indeed, may Allah, you know, bring much benefit from the from the work of Nabik. Brothers and sisters, again, I repeat the three ways to donate. You see them on the screen. Please go to the website, nabik.org forward slash donate donation, and you can make a secure donation online. If you want to give directly from your account, you can uh, go and use Zelle. Uh, it's a very straightforward. You just need the email address to where the funds are going. And our email address is info at nabik.org. And of course, you can either pledge or text the pledge to uh, call or text the pledge to uh, 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 the number 901-233-0645, 901-233-0645. Again, it's critically important that you do something, inshallah, uh, after having heard all of these great projects. We know you will because you've supported us in the past. I've visited you in different communities in, in Memphis, in Sacramento, in, uh, in uh, Dallas, in New York, uh, in Virginia, uh, wherever we've gone, you've always supported us, mashallah. And so may Allah accept it from you. May Allah accept it from all of us. And may Allah bless the founders of Nabik, the, the current and former board members of Nabik, and indeed the, um, the volunteers on the ground and the staff on the ground in Bangladesh who make all of our projects such a reality. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.